everyone. Welcome back to Bending the Narrative here on the Aspect Network. I'm one of your hosts, Alex Batts, and joining me every week to discuss the latest and greatest in the world of Avatar is Kate Krunquist. Kate, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Alex. Thank you so much. So today we are meeting one of my favorite characters of all time in the world of Avatar with the episode called Jet. Now, to start this week, let's take a look at the Avatar world map, and let's track our Team Avatar's journey. And I really, like there's not much to track here, but... <laughs> <laughs> they just they cross the gorgeous red forest that we were talking about last week, which, yes. again, just continues to look so good throughout this episode. So I'm sure we'll, like, talk about it more. But Beautiful I also love voyage. that Jet just gets... It's his episode. Like, the, ti- the episode is just titled Jet... The forest on the map is just labeled yeah. as Jet's forest. Like it's just. I it's mean, his. Jet does say he's like, "This is my forest." I mean, like, yeah, it, like he's like, "I got it under control." That like this is ours, and you really you see that throughout the episode too. Yeah. Um. Yeah. They they don't make they don't make much progress as far as where they need to be going. They actually are going south a little bit now, so that's not <laughs> not optimal. But not you know, optimal. But it happens. We get you there. Know. Yeah. Um. It's cool though. I love this section of the map just because, like, visually, it looks so cool. Like, it's the red forest is such a great look. It is, and it's so I like. It's a great departure from just a typical green forest. Because mm-hmm. when I used to look at this, I was like, "What is all that?" And then I realized last week, I was like, "Oh my god, okay, it's the the uh, yeah. fall leaves or yeah, the red just... leaves because they're just red in the episode, mm-hmm. whether that's with the season or not, or they're just always like that." Because this is the Avatar world. That could be. Those trees could just always be red. Mm-hmm. And it also, like, it creates changing. such a great mood and atmosphere for yes. all of them. Like, it really sets apart the tone of these episodes and what's going on here with the characters and, like, how uh, everything comes together. It's just all Yeah, like, it is a good artistic choice. If We're in forests so much throughout the series that they're probably mm-hmm. like, how do we make this stand out and how do we make this different? Yeah. The small it details. It works. It works. Um, so, yeah. As Kate said, this week we're meeting the Freedom Fighters with episode 10. So this is directed by Dave Filoni and written by James Egan. And if you're just joining us, we will be discussing the show in its totality. So be warned for spoilers. But Kate, uh, let's start with you. What what did you think? Oh, I love this episode, but we know that. Um, If you've been listening, I love Jet. Jet is one of my favorite characters, even though I get it. He's the most hated. He's Mm -hmm. a bad boy. I can't help it. I love the bad boy. I mean, he's it. great. I'm like, just a girl. I, what do you want from me? <laughs> you, uh, he, again, and we'll get into it. Katara, if there's one thing she's going to do, it's fall for a cute boy instantly. And it's <laughs> so, it's so real. I mean, hey, Sokka gets to do it. Sokka falls for the cute girl instantly. That's um, true. That's a good when, point. So double that's standard a, here. That's it. Double standard. That's a sibling trait that they share. They're both just like, yeah. oh, cute person. I'll do whatever they want. It's water tribe activities. <laughs> water tribe vibes. Um, yeah, so I love the opening of this episode that's on Momo, and he's going to, like, catch the bug, and he gets caught in a trap, which I'm so worried for my boy Momo instantly. My boy like, Momo! You can't kill on. Momo! <laughs> <laughs> um, So he gets caught, the gang finds him, and lets him out, mm-hmm. and Aang also is, like, going to let the other animals out of the trap, but then they get, like, mm-hmm. cut down faster by the... And so they fall down. And but, it like, Sokka, because like- Sokka... Um- I just like that little moment right there. I like because Mm -hmm. Aang is like getting up, like trying to Mm -hmm. untie all them safely. And for the first time, I think we, Ooh, sorry. I don't know how I zoom, zoom gives me a (laughs) thumbs up sometimes. (laughs) Um, Sometimes uh, this is the first time we see Sokka actually do something faster than the avatar, which is great. Somebody without bending. Um, And I love that little moment. He uses his uh, boomerang to do it. Yeah. Which is do it. Just and I also, there. I love him noting that uh, the traps are Fire Nation because they're, you can yes. tell by the metal work, which again, we've been like emphasizing this throughout metal. our episodes. <laughs> yeah. But it's just a really good, um, again, visual indicator of like what the Fire Nation, like where they where they are and their presence mm-hmm. and stuff. A reminder. Um, yeah. And I also love Sokka being smart where he's like, we should not be flying Appa because that's probably how Zuko's tracking us all the time because Appa kind of stands out a lot. And they're like, no, he doesn't. And he's like, dude, he's a flying bison with an arrow on his head. Like, like of course <laughs> he does. Um, which is hilarious. I also love um, Aang being like to Appa. He's like, he's just jealous, jealous that he doesn't have an arrow on his head, which is just so yeah. funny. Yeah. Like, the, like, the I do love that. 
And I also love the constant bickering that they do whenever they like start walking and they're like, oh, how about Sokka's um, Sokka's intuition? Intuition. intuition? Why don't we ask Sokka's Sokka's intuition? intuition. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? I think it. Instincts. Why don't we ask Sokka's instincts? instincts? Yeah. That's I knew it, it. wasn't intuition. Yeah, <laughs> like I know, I was like, does sound right? <laughs> they just keep on hammering at home, and it's such a recurring joke, and it works so well. Yeah, and, and this is like a very big like sibling fight episode and sibling rivalry. Yeah, and because there's a big Katara versus like, Sokka. Episode. Sokka sees through it like instantly, mm-hmm. and he's like, "There's no, there's more going on here," which is great. Um, I do love when they're like arguing about. She's like, "Who made you the leader?" And he's like, "Well, I did." And I love her response. Like, why do boys always think there needs to be a leader? And like, oh, that's such a good, like, that's such a good, like, um, just like philosophical point, honestly. Yes. Like to be like, there doesn't need to be a like a specific leader in every instance of everything. Like we could make group decisions. Yeah, we can all make group out. decisions. It's so true. It is and such she a... she also just burns his ass where she's like, I'm going to be so bossy if you kiss the girl. <laughs> like, okay, man, wow. Like you really... I feel like I have said that to my brother in a fight when we were younger. Like that's it's so like, real. Low man, hanging but, fruit, but yeah. To his heart. And she's like, and Grand Grand doesn't <laughs> count. And he's like, oh, God, Grand right. Grand doesn't like, count. He's like, damn. She got sure. him. Uh, oh, which is just hilarious. Uh, I also love the like the smash cut to them being like, I bet walking won't be so bad. And then the smash cut and they're like, oh, this sucks so hard. <laughs> like walking actually. sucks. I do which, like that like, that yeah. does point out like how helpful Appa is and how they wouldn't have been able to do anything that they do without having Appa. Yeah, like it really puts into perspective how much ground they're able to cover literally because of the yeah. flying bison and like not mm-hmm. having to lug around all of their gear and stuff like yeah. on their backs and things like that. But then it also is super hilarious that the whole point of them walking is to avoid the Fire Nation and they just straight up walk into a Fire Nation <laughs> Into camp, a Fire Nation camp, like, yeah. Which is awesome. Um, So we get that and we see Katara like use the water from the like jerkin mm-hmm. thing that she has, which is really cool. And that's the first time we see that i think yeah yeah which is great because like that's such a katara thing that she's able to mm-hmm. like use and pull from and then they're obviously severely outnumbered but then we get the awesome introduction of jet and the freedom fighters <laughs> and they just are they're so cool it's such a strong they're character so introduction cool. for all of them and jet his swords in particular are crazy cool so cool i noticed that you you put in the notes so they're weapons known by a few names they're hook swords twin hooks Mm -hmm. tiger heads or tiger blades and so they're three weapons in one so it's a long pole with a hook at the end an arched blade above the fist and then a spearhead beneath the handle and like it's crazy to all yeah they're so they're so sick like they're awesome and they really do also yeah. so creatively he uses them in like all of the ways that you would think about like yeah. using them mm-hmm. and that's present in the choreography throughout the episode throughout his first introduction and like his combat is just so smooth like he just is mowing so through smooth. people and then the also like it's just such a good sequence of the like um sequential introduction of all of the freedom fighters like you get mm-hmm. jet coming in and kicking ass for like i don't want to say a few minutes it's not a few minutes it's like 30 yeah. seconds but of like just but him. it's like but then you and start... it's like his typical like he's the typical like cool guy like <laughs> yeah. yeah i can do all this he's like, doing all the like mm-hmm. slow-mo and like the cool like standing like looking awesome shots for a second yeah and, like, doing everything and then you start getting like more of the freedom fighters come in and join the fight too. Mm-hmm. And like they get their moments to stand out. And I also love the bit in there where he Jet just keeps on like stealing Sokka's kills essentially. Yes! They're, like, the no- they're the knockouts because they can't kill anyone, obviously. But like mm-hmm. he just keeps on like taking like the gotta be faster just- than that. <laughs> yeah, which like of course is Sokka's so like- good. Oh. He's so mad about it, which is hilarious. Um so douchey. And then I love at it. the end of the fight, I love how like Jet just like pulls up to Katara and it's just like two inches from her essentially and it's like hey and you're like oh, all right man like you don't have to go like this dude just Mr. Immediately steal like, your oh. girl <laughs> yeah just shows up and she's immediately I mean, literally like, comment on that was purr <laughs> yeah he just shows up and immediately like it's like all right hey what's up like how's it going <laughs> it's like hey girl um, which is hilarious he's just and... so like typical douchey guy who is mm-hmm. just so overconfident but he like knows plays it well he plays it perfectly. yeah he plays it well um, but i love it because like there's a reason for it we'll get to that mm-hmm. but yeah, he's gotta like he's gotta mask a lot of stuff and so that's why mm-hmm. he's doing that um so they go to their hideout which is a sick hideout one i love the, the coolest like, this is yeah the best. It, 
it's the coolest thing. Also, it's just hilarious that like Aang obviously gets up there by himself because he can like glide up there mm-hmm. right, and use airbending to get up there. Sokka has to use the like lift thing. And mm-hmm. Jenna's just like, oh, hang on to me, like Katara. Like, <laughs> and they do the whole slow Eight year old like, me was going crazy. I was like, oh my God. And she like starts blushing so hard. And they do like the slow mo and the dramatic lighting. And like, it's all just the most I love like, it. romance. Like, this is honestly the horniest episode of the show. So it's far. so I, true. I, I this episode was of... written by women for women. Like, I can't. It's written by Brian, like Brian and Michael, but (laughs) (laughs) like, I I can't think of an episode off the top of my head that has more. Like, they're just going for it. Like, it's not even this guy's Saka, but not even. Yeah, it's it's like (laughs) rewatching it. I was like, man, I did not remember it being this like intense and almost heavy handed. Yeah, it's like right in your face, about but I mean, it works. Like, it plays, yeah, it plays super well. Um, Like, it's a very real scenario, and I feel like I've been in that where you like immediately like get enamored with the cool guy Mm -hmm. and then you know it turns out not all that glitters is gold obviously (laughs) yeah Yeah. um he's kind of a terrorist (laughs) he's kind of blowing stuff up that he shouldn't have kind of killing innocent people beating up all dudes for no reason but you know it's (laughs) fine it's fine (laughs) he's just a good man in a bad situation okay yeah We'll see. I can um, fix him. <laughs> so they get to the hideout in the trees, uh, which is, of course, inspired by the Ewok hideout. They even mm-hmm. call it the Ewok village. Like in yeah. the art book, they mentioned that, uh, which it's so sick. It's one of the coolest locations, I think, in the show. I know we were going to say that about like 80 different locations. 80 the different show, locations, yeah. Because but... <laughs> they all look so cool. But this one's definitely one of my favorites. I'm a huge As I'm a, a kid, big... I was like, I want to play on that. I want to yeah. go up there so bad. I want a tree house. Like, I literally, I follow, uh, there's a couple, slide tangent, there's a couple pages on Instagram I follow that make like net tree houses and stuff. Like, for, yes, like people. And I'm those. like, I want one. I want one so like, bad. I'm on that. <laughs> and this, this is that. It's like this version of that. And it just looks so the cool urge to climb. and like fun to be around. And it's like, oh, this is the coolest mm-hmm. hideout ever that you could have. Um, and so that's cool. We find out that they've been messing with the Fire Nation since they took over the nearby village. So they're just like, um, you know, stopping shipments and supply lines, like mm-hmm. combating the Fire Nation soldiers whenever they can. Um, we find out all the Freedom Fighters have been scorned by the Fire Nation in one mm-hmm. way or another. Uh, Jet lost his parents to the Fire Nation when he was eight, and that he doesn't say radicalized him. He says it changed me forever. But like the subtext is it radicalized him, and we yeah, bro is radical. Yeah, like that's what you know it is for him. Um, mm-hmm. And so like Katara, of course, immediately though, like that's a thing that she's able to relate to with him because of her mother. And mm-hmm. so they have which that. makes him even more gooey eyed. Yeah, yeah. She's like, oh, see, he's like the best, and also I can. We have this shared we trauma, have this bond. In common. <laughs> trauma, trauma bond. Trauma bond. Gotta love that. Um, Real. so we get that. They have this celebratory feast for their ambush victory earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, which reminds and... me of the scene in Star Wars again, where they have they the, do the yeah, same the thing. It's very funny. Yeah. It's so good. Um, so we get, uh. <laughs> Jet being like, we can use your your like y'all help y'all's help. I love that at first he's like saying talking about like needing Katara and Aang because he's an avatar, obviously, and like not including Sokka. And then Sokka's like, no, we need to leave tonight. And then he's like, oh, but Sokka, we needed you for something too. Yeah, for a secret mission. And then of course like, Sokka's pride is like, well, okay, I can do that, I guess. And so yeah. that's how they end up getting him to stay. And mm-hmm. so the next scene we get is them on this important min- mission. And I do mm-hmm. love, it's a really cool character detail and thing that Sokka uses his knife in the tree mm-hmm. to like amplify mm-hmm. the vibrations to hear when there's someone coming. Yes. Which is another genius Sokka move. Like, it's he's wild. not just he's the like, comedic relief, he's not just mm-hmm. the butt of the jokes. Like, he actually he has a he lot pulls to bring. his weight. He has a lot yeah. to bring. He's smart. And he literally is like, no, it sounds like it's one person. And it is just one person. It's an mm-hmm. elderly man, it's an elderly Fire Nation man. And Jet is the meanest that you could possibly be to him. <laughs> like, <laughs> damn. Down. And they're just beating <laughs> him up. And he's like, and Sokka's like, hey, we should like not be doing this. He's just an old dude. Like, it's fine. And Jet's like, well, but he's Fire Nation. Like, he can't be innocent. And like, so that's, you know, that sequence, which is not great. And so that's really where mm-hmm. like we as the audience mm-hmm. first start to see the really big cracks in Jet and like, yeah, we're like, ideology. Oh, 
Yeah, he's and that's like this is a very relevant thing because this is a thing that happens during war times or um, when there's tension between countries, and people do get that radical. They're like, well, if you don't hate everybody that's associated with this, then Mm -hmm. it's just leaving no room for nuance. Like no room for nuance. No room Mm -hmm. for like genuine. Like not everybody at that place is a part of the problem like it's it's the the to bring it back to another star wars comparison it's the like dealing in absolutes like if you're not with me then you're my enemy yes. like type yes thing. Like, yes it's that <laughs> like and jet's like no like he's fire nation he can't be good he has to be like yeah pure evil which i think in the live action jet actually says that he's like if you're not he, with me i think he does say that he's like he like, but he says it a weird us. way it's like if you're not with me you're no, not yeah, I me. do remember that because I do <laughs> remember <laughs> specifically making a note about him having the, we like, did make Anakin a note, moment. yeah. <laughs> An Anakin yeah. moment, yeah. He straight up says that, uh, which, yeah, it's hilarious. Um, so we this get... easily digestible Anakin. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we get him and those cracks showing. We get Sokka noticing it. And Aang and Katara, though, are blind to this. They're oblivious to this. They just see mm-hmm. the cool part and Jet being like, oh, no, this is the best. And Aang, being a 12-year-old, is like, this is the treehouse village. Of course, yeah. this is awesome. And, like, look, they're they're the fighting cool against... The older kid. Yeah, exactly. Like, they're fighting against the Fire Nation. Like, this is good. And then um, Sokka comes back and tells Aang and Katara about the mission and that it was bad. And then whenever they go and they're mm-hmm. talking to Jet about it, and he's like, oh, well, he conveniently left out the fact that he's a Fire Nation like guy and like uses that. And like, so Katara and Anger like, see. And then Jet also 100% pulls out a knife that definitely was not on that old dude. Was like, not on that old dude. <laughs> it yeah. definitely was just something that they had confiscated earlier. Like, they never actually like say that in the show explicitly, but like, Explicit. but like, you know, sure. he makes yeah. that up. Yeah. And well, I mean, like Sokka is like, there wasn't a knife. And so like, you're, it's a, like he said versus she said thing, but like, mm-hmm. it's, it's definitely, the old dude didn't have that knife. Like, come on. The old dude didn't have that knife. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, they didn't but even also left though, before they confiscated it. That's a sick knife though. And he has poison like in the head. Yes. You can like pull out. I'm like, oh, that's a nice, that's a cool like, design, that was awesome. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, and they all, I love that they are like, oh yeah, he's a Fire Nation assassin, which is just mm-hmm. another like get you to think about the fire nation having assassins which is wild also like yeah but then it would be cool. like could be an old man who's to say yeah that's like disguised um and so mm-hmm. that's how they're able to yeah. like keep ang and katara how jet is able to keep ang and katara jet, he like you know in line. gaslight gatekeep girl boss jet yeah He's that's his do. that's his mo and it, it works i'm gonna try to defend the jet <laughs> And Katara and Sokka fight because she just thinks that he's jealous. And mm-hmm. he's like, no, you're not seeing that he's terrible, actually. And so Sokka Which is, like, up- fair. Like, they would believe that. Like, they would be like, no, we, we we were having this argument earlier. So this obviously has to do with that. And he's like, I know it, it seems like that, but it's... But it's not. This is yeah. real. Like, yeah. It's a very... The way it's that they to- lay and, like, set the situation up, it's very easy to see why all of the characters feel and believe the way they do in those moments like yes, it very yes. it very much makes sense and is in line with all of mm-hmm. them and how they all operate and things like that mm-hmm. um so Sokka hears them in the middle of the night the freedom fighters and he decides mm-hmm. to uh follow them and he overhears them planning to blow up the dam which will flood a um earth kingdom like village but it'll it'll wipe out all the fire they're trying to wipe out all the fire nation mm-hmm. soldiers there and even I think it's uh, the Duke. Maybe it's either the Duke. Yeah, or he says, "Aren't there? It's the little one, people. innocent yeah. people there." Yeah, and mm-hmm. Jed is like, "Well, that's the cost of war." He's like, "That's part yeah. of it." And you're like, "Oh, well, that's he's not like, great." Whoa, yeah, that's <laughs> he's intense. like they don't. He's like they don't understand the demands of war, like not like you and I do. And it's like, okay, well, we know exactly like where you are now as far yeah. as your moral lines and the fact that they don't really exist <laughs> really exist and he says like, this he has... to Sokka and he tries to like pull Sokka and he's like no mm-hmm. you get it like like you're like we know together like this is something they've affected us mm-hmm. that's our enemy yeah we have to Which, do like, what we can and yeah he says that because also they do catch Sokka spying on them and they're like hey yeah. what are you doing bro like <laughs> get over here 
And yeah. So that's that's when Jet's like explaining that and saying that they'll do what they have to do. And so they hold mm-hmm. Sokka and they are taking him on a long walk is what Jet says, which also I feel like the implication there is that at the end of that long walk, they're going to kill him. Like, yeah. I feel, I feel like, like you're going swimming with the fishes like that. Yeah. Like they don't obviously like, get there and say that because it's a kid's cartoon on Nick in 2005. But like, true. True. That definitely feels like the like take them on a long walk thing. You're like, oh man, like I actually right, never dude. thought of that. You're right. Like at the end, were they probably going to kill him? That's crazy. Yeah, I feel like that's definitely what he wanted them to do. Or they could um, have said like they'll tie him up in the village and be like, he tried to save them, and he was just like, yeah, a casualty yeah. of war. Like casualty. You know, he was mm-hmm. in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what they do, and then Jet comes back. And to Eng and Katara is like, oh, yeah, Sokka and I like talked it out and he like apologized and stuff because Katara, of course, being head over heels for Jet is like, I'm sorry for the way that Sokka has been acting. Like, I know he's been super rude. And he's like, oh, no, it's fine. We're bros. Like, he's on a secret mission right now, actually being <laughs> held hostage, really. But he's, he's working. Yeah. On it. <laughs> and then so he's bringing... liar. Ugh. Yeah. It just manipulation. To Doing what highest. men do best. Lie. <laughs> Which is a lie, cheat, and steal. Um, lie, cheat, and steal. And so that's what he does. And he gets Katara and Aang to come along. And he's like, I need you guys to get the water to fill up the dam. I forget even what he tells them is the point of that. Because, like, there's no... I feel like the only... Oh, wait, yeah. Thing. He says... He does say he's, something, though. He's like, we need to fill it up for... For what reason, though? I don't think I took a note on this. I don't know either. Oh, they but need a water supply. Mm, nope, I'm not even sure. <laughs> I don't even. I forget. It's I, in the. It's in the episode, though. Yeah, guys, um, trust us. It's there. <laughs> he says some lie to Ang and Katara mm-hmm. to get them to fill the river with more water so that the dam mm-hmm. can be full whenever they his actual plan. Whenever they go to flood the dam, and it'll flood the uh, mm-hmm. village. And then also before this, I did want to make note. It's an important line when Sokka is talking to i think um the duke and uh it might be smeller b actually and um pipsqueak i think might be the two that are like escorting soccer mm-hmm. mm-hmm. away that sounds right um but he's like yeah, talking Pip to them he's the big one yeah and he's like why are you following him like this is clearly wrong and their response mm-hmm. is jet's a great leader we follow what he says and things turn out okay and i think it's a really important thing for them to emphasize the problem of just b- blindly following a leader because yeah. they're the leader and like things are fine but like not thinking more about what that is and like what you're doing mm-hmm. um it's just important to to highlight that and the fact that they're doing that again in a kid's show in 2005 in a kid's show it's so wild. it's so complex but it's nuanced like they do it mm-hmm. in such a in an easy digestible way but without taking away the weight of it and like the actual message Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's really great it's incredible that they do that honestly and again like it's the point of the episode about like leadership and Sokka struggle with wanting to be a leader i didn't even think about the fact that yeah the the episode opens with him (laughs) like them arguing about leaders and like why does everyone need to be a leader and then the Mm -hmm. huge emphasis is like the fact that he's not a good leader actually (laughs) like yeah like jet is the leader that he wants to be but Mm -hmm. it turns out that's it's just the problems with that and how it needs to be more Mm -hmm. complex and you need to be more like democratic and the sol- like the solutions yes. that you come up with mm-hmm. and like you can't just like have one person who has their idea of what's right and like that's it like you need mm-hmm. to be smarter about it than that um so that's important and again just wild that it's in the show and yeah so we get that and we get Katara and going to the res- reservoir and they do that and, or well they fill up the river and then mm-hmm. uh Katara's like oh let's go to where Jed is and like meet up with him even when Jet was like, no, go back to the camp because he obviously yeah. doesn't want them to figure out the plan. And she's like, no, also, wait, sure this he'll... is the first time also Ang and Katara water bend water that they can't see. Can't see. Yeah. Like, yeah. She makes which a is big interesting. point of, about that. And like, yeah. Uh, I also love Ang's little insecurity for a moment where like, because Jet tells Katara, he's like, oh, I'm sure like a water bender is like talented as you, like, we'll be able to do it. And you know, mm-hmm. that reassures her. And then Ang is like, what about me? Oh, yeah. He's like, you're the Avatar kid. Like, you'll do it. <laughs> yeah. But I just love he's that Aang like, is I'm like, just hey, do it. <laughs> I need, I, like, I need the encouragement too, man. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> um, Which is hilarious. So they do that. They fill up the river and they go to where Jet is. 
and they immediately see like what's going on. They see the the um, explosives there. I love how instantly Aang puts it together, which like part of that is the yes. fact that like they're on a short run time and they need the plot to go fast. So like, yeah. you know, but like, I love how like Aang sees it and like, like you don't later, feel that. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I love how two seconds later, he's like, Oh, they're about to blow this dam and like flood this entire village and Katara just being in like disbelief. And he's like, no, he wouldn't Denial. do that. Denial. Yeah. Yeah. And then Jed's like, nah, I would though actually. <laughs> and that's the thing. Like with, I just like, I know women before who there's a guy where we're like, no, he's a bad guy. And they're like, no, like I know him. He wouldn't do that. He'd, Mm-hmm. that's not him and I, I feel like we've all had a moment maybe like that where we're like that's not that person yeah but like it is that person but it is that person and like, it's it's also funny it's too, great point I feel to like, make not funny it's pretty tragic every time oh. that happens like both <laughs> it, both in stories and in real life but I feel yeah. like in a lot of those instances too where people are like oh no they're not like that the person that they're defending will be the first person to say no I am like that like whenever yeah. the like cards are down, like the chips are on the table, they're like, no, that's me actually. Mm-hmm. Like, and people just want to not believe them or take them on their word at that. Like it takes more convincing because they have this idealized version of who they, they are. And so it like mm-hmm. clashes so hard with the reality of the situation. And so that's why it takes Katara. She's like, no, like I can't believe this. And then we get one of my favorite one V ones in the entire series, honestly, <sighs> when, and yes. Jet start fighting. They're fighting through the trees and stuff. And it's just awesome. Like it's the best use to um Jet does this really cool thing with his weapons where one of them he'll throw, but he'll catch it with the other one. So he like mm-hmm. elongates his weapons mm-hmm. by putting yeah. the two of them together, but without them falling apart. Because mm-hmm. they have know, the hooks on the sick. ends. The hooks so on the ends, like, yeah. Yeah, hook together. Hook on. It's, it's so crazy. Cool. He uses them so ingeniously and like also just the like the setting like we're saying looks so cool them fighting through the trees and it's Mm -hmm. also cool to see someone who's not a bender go toe-to-toe fight the avatar yeah the avatar like the master airbender like it's wild and it's such a good it's such a good fight it's done so well and they both like have moments where they get the upper hand on each other and like it's just Mm -hmm. great the sequence is so cool i think this is one of the first not one of the first but Definitely like an early instance of Aang using defensive airbending and like learning mm-hmm. what Boomy taught him about like you have to, you're going to have to use defensive techniques. You can't just keep being offensive. Like you have to, you mm-hmm. have to hit back. You have to yeah. put them down. And it's awesome. Um, I, yeah, I, he I like love starts whenever, doing that here. Yeah. Whenever he first like gets the upper or not first, but whenever he gets the upper hand for a second where he's just like absolutely he's throwing so much air (laughs) at jet yes like it's a huge you see the the wind streams yeah you see the funnels which is just like it's so cool it's such a good visual so that whole fight is awesome but then jet gets the upper hand on him actually by the end like jet pretty much like Mm -hmm. wins but then katara comes in and like saves the day yes it's like coming in and it's like nope like i'll come in jet you're wrong (laughs) justice yeah and it's great. It's awesome that she comes in and does that and then ends up freezing him, so which is good. such a, it's such a sick, like. It's so anim- good. It's- in my notes, I wrote like, oh, there's many a man. I wish I could do this too. How <laughs> good that must have felt for her. How Oh, yeah. Awesome and she's also, she, she like freezes him, which is a, so such a cool animation to see just like go up, like, nice. and, 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 and like encase his entire body. And I love her, just the pain in her voice whenever she's like, you're sick and I trusted you. Mm -hmm. Like, I believed in you and you're awful, actually. Like, this is terrible. And you feel it. You feel it. You really feel it. And I love it. It's such a moment that could so easily be taken as that fake, like, feminism moment. Girls get Mm -hmm. it done. Girls can do it. But it's like, this is all worked for. This is all justified. And this is all, like, Mm -hmm. this is when it's done well. Like, this is what... I really want from those types of shows and the type of writing is I want to see it done this well. Like it's such good drama and it's such a good, it's like for a kid that, and I say this again, like it's a good little like feminist moment and like a good, like Mm -hmm. early on, like girl, if he's not what you thought and he's lying to you, take control. Don't let the boy just fight for you. You can also fight. Yeah. Like you can fight the boy. And she does that. And she's the one who like, she's the one who wins. Yeah. She's the one who solves the, like the solution for them. Which is mm-hmm. great. I also love like it's such a great dramatic moment when after he's frozen and there's the shot of Aang and Katara like walking towards him and just the framing of it is great. And that's when she starts 
being like you're terrible and like i can't believe i trusted you and it's just like hey, the drama all just building to the moment is fantastic <sighs> But then Jet, being the terrible person that he is, still like mm-hmm. whistles for the dam to be blown up because he's like, it doesn't matter, you're too late. Like everything's yeah. already in place. Like, and Damn. Aang and Katara are like, Such hopefully Sokka, Sokka got. The- oh yeah, it's a great villain moment. He's like, oh well, you're screwed still. Actually, <laughs> yeah, I can still like, whistle. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Which like rookie mistake, Katara? Come on, you should have covered. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they're like, well, hopefully Sokka got there in time to stop it, and he didn't. He didn't. Uh, mm-hmm. for the actual explosion and so we see the entire town get absolutely wrecked and flooded but of and we course think they lose yeah yeah we think they lose it's a, it's great that they hang on to that for like 30 seconds 45 seconds you're like oh no like they actually lost but then uh Sokka comes up on Appa and like over the hill and it's like don't worry Appa to save I got the it. day. yeah I got everyone to safety and I love how also they're able to pull back like they make in a joke line kind of but the fact that they're like oh your instincts told you to like go to the town like to warn the people instead and then they mm-hmm. also explain that the reason the people in the town were able to listen to him is because the one old dude who yes. he tried to defend earlier in the episode is like no nah, he's he's a good guy actually he's telling yeah. the truth and so that's how they're able to evacuate everyone so even though the town got destroyed all the people are alive still and I love Jet trying to justify it as in he was trying to, he's like, we were trying to free them. And Sokka goes, who would be free? Everyone would be dead. Be dead. Like, there's no, <gasps> no one would be free there. And he calls him a traitor because he stopped fighting for people. Like he mm-hmm. just, is just fighting for his own like revenge, essentially. I feel like this and, was Sokka's version of Imprisoned. This is like what Imprisoned did for Katara. Mm-hmm. Um, this episode did for Sokka. Yeah, it's so good. It's great. Mm-hmm. So we get that, and um, Katara just like leaves Jet there, which is great. She's like, no, "Period." You're like, you could fine. defrost on your own. You'll, you'll get <laughs> out eventually. So, it's so hilarious. That bro definitely would have had hypothermia. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, but it's fine. Period. <laughs> um, so fine. yeah, they leave him there, and again, they uh, they fly away on Appa into the sunset, which is how you know they tend to most of these episodes end yeah again but it's so good it works like if it's not broke don't fix it you know type thing exactly and it it worked it's justified again like like we've said it's multiple always times true. it is just amazing stuff all across but i love this episode so much it's so good there's so many great moments i love like the great love hate relationship with jet also mm-hmm. um for my anime fans out there jet is inspired by uh, Spike Spiegel from Cowboy Bebop, um, nice. which as we'll see, we'll see a lot of Cowboy Bebop inspiration in this entire show. The creators mm-hmm. loved it, but I just think that is a great little comparison. And they even yeah. have like very similar personalities. You can definitely um, see it in his like demeanor and especially his face. Oh yeah, like, the demeanor the and the stuff. face, like, the hair. It's I haven't Spike seen Spiegel. Cowboy Bebop, but I've seen gifts and like images and stuff. Oh, it's and so like, good. I, like if you put them side by side, you're like, oh yeah. And I think that's why I love Jet because I'm like, oh, I love Spike Spiegel, so. <laughs> Yeah, it no, goes hand in hand. All right, guys. Any anything else you want to say about the episode? No, nah, not not for the the main thing. Thumbs up. Sorry, though. another another <laughs> thumbs up. Sorry, guys. Zoom does that for me. Anyways, when we come back, we're going to talk more about the episode and how it compares to the live action version of it. All right, mm-hmm. we'll be right back. Hi, my name is Nagan, and I'm Bree. Enjoying this show on the Aspect Network. Then check out Viltra Mics, an invincible podcast. Each week, we go back and discuss your favorite episodes of the series and review new episodes as they release right on Amazon Prime. Join us as we travel space, time, and the multiverse with Mark Grayson and discuss one of the most exciting superhero series on TV on Viltra Mics, here on the Aspect Network. And now, back to the show. Hey guys, welcome back to Bending the Narrative. Each week we dive into Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender live action series. And while you can find our original thoughts on the series and our overall thoughts, um, you can find that in our first episode. But throughout book one, we will be discussing in further detail how each episode compares to its live action counterpart. Alex, let's start with you. Yeah, so, okay. This one's weird because they took a lot of... The, like they introduced Jet earlier, they put him in the King of Omashu episode, mm-hmm. which 
I have now said a couple of times I've been on the record. I, again, in a vacuum, do really enjoy that episode. I think that it works in the, like, intrigue side of things. And, like, it's an interesting blend of, like, yeah. the way that Jet and the Freedom Fighters are operating there. And Jet's also a super strong character in the live action series, too. Like, they really, they do port over his, like, personality and his, like, radical extremism and, like, what he's about and, like, all of that stuff really successfully, I think. like Yeah, like, I, I think I, this is the one thing that works. I feel like, yeah, of the, like, direct comparisons character-wise to make from animation to live action, he's arguably the strongest one because, like, they don't really, aside from the, like, time as far as, like, when he's introduced and also location of where he's introduced being completely different, his character still really is the same mm -hmm. core thing and operates the same way. So I feel and like he feels good. realistic. Like he feels very yeah. like it matches. I can, I can believe it. I can believe mm -hmm. somebody acts this way. He yeah. feels very palpable. He doesn't feel like a characterization or anything or. Yeah. It's so, so like all of that for him, I think is really good. He works. It's just the, you again, by cutting things like they do, you lose one the location of the forest and their tree village and all of that stuff, which we spent a good portion talking about how epic all of that is and how great all of mm -hmm. that looks. And I would have loved to see that in live action. That would have been cool. Because I think no. one of <laughs> like <laughs> one of the things I feel like for half of the sets or for the locations and the live action stuff, it did look awesome and it was really cool to see like transported or translated to live action. Mm -hmm. Even though, ironically, a lot of the time that I thought they looked the best is when you get the full, like, wide shots that are just pure VFX. So it's just... Yeah, animation. which is <laughs> animated. <laughs> like, so, you know, there's Turns that. out I like the parts of the live action that are animated. <laughs> yeah, which, like, a figure. But it still would have been cool to see that on that kind of scale and in the, the more... Even though I do think... There's a lot of debate about this too, just generally in the industry about like the push for realism and stuff, not necessarily mm -hmm. being the direction that we should go. But it would have been cool still, I think, in this instance to see that. Like I would have liked. But then also I'm now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, man, you would have lost like the stylized nature of it. Nature yes. is double double pun there, because they're in nature. <laughs> uh, but you like you would have you would have lost that a little <laughs> bit if you do like translate that to live action. So yeah. Maybe I'm happy we didn't see that. But yeah, so it's a bummer that we lose that side of his introduction and like the location and stuff for mm -hmm. that. And you also then are, see, I don't know. It's interesting because you can see the lines that they, like the lines of logic that they followed as far as you do still get him wanting to blow stuff up. So that, that stays the same, right? Yeah. And like using, using that to do that. So you get that. He is a manipulator get, girl boss. Yeah, like, he you is. get the Katara immediately, like, following following yeah. for him and following him. You get and I do like, immediately like, being, like... I no. really... In the live action, I'm like, yeah, I see how you did that, Katara. I get it. <laughs> yeah, mm, I mean... Once again, great. Sebastian Amoruso. <laughs> hit my line. You could DM me any day. Um, I am single, Crushed it. Sebastian. <laughs> for you. <laughs> Crushed it. Is, yeah. I mean, yeah, Crushed he's it. great. Um, his introduction is amazing. Like, he's super charismatic, and, like, you can see why people follow him. Like, mm -hmm. he's awesome. And so, like, that all works, and you keep the through line of him wanting to blow stuff up. You also keep the through line of him blowing Earth Kingdom stuff up instead of a village, yes. which is just part of Omashu, mm -hmm. which works. Um, mm -hmm. He just escalates it to a whole new level, and it's like, I'm going to mm -hmm. take out the king. <laughs> like, Yeah, like, I was like, whoa! <laughs> and you're like, all right, man, that's a little... Radical. Like, now you're not even... Yeah, it's, it's a very... It makes it harder... See, that's the thing that I just thought about, too. It makes it harder for him to have the internal justification for doing it because mm -hmm. in the animated version, he can still justify it by being like, we're taking out the fire nation soldiers as opposed mm -hmm. to in the live action one. He's like, well, these people in charge have let the corruption fester and rot and they're all mm -hmm. part of the problem. And it's a yeah. less direct, like, even though obviously his logic mm -hmm. in the animated series is still flawed because like, he's going to kill innocent people and yeah. in doing what he's trying to do you can see more of the like rationale you, that he you has can, there because yeah, he's like taking out understand it more people. it's more palpable but yeah mm -hmm. whereas in the the live it's action too much one, of it's a like, leap yeah it's like oh well the majority of these people actually are probably innocent as opposed to like 
he's yeah. taking out direct Fire Nation people. And so, like, that's a weird thing that they kind of do there, which is not the best. But then they also just, like, and again, you're just combining so many different things into this episode. Like, we get the, like, machinist in there, which is, like, throwing mm-hmm. him in with them is a weird thing. And, like... It's a lot. Yeah, it just is, like, again, where, like, his... It takes the focus away from him and like spreads it out to like five different things in the episode yeah. as opposed to just being about Jet and the Freedom Fighters and Sokka mm-hmm. and Katara and what they're doing as opposed to in the live action. It's like we have the secret tunnels and the badger moles oh, and the and... king of Omashu and Aang's doing the boomy stuff on the side instead of Aang being more involved with Jet. In and this, set. yeah. And it's like we're, we're losing it. We're losing the plot. Completely. <laughs> I we're literally. I was like, we're just doing cameos. We're just cosplaying at this point. This is just yeah. one giant like fun. Let's have everybody and and filming. It's just cosplay at this point. We're just hanging yeah. around. And it's. I struggle so hard again, and I've said it so many times now with the episode. Cause I think that in a vacuum, just the episode on its whole, like on its own, mm-hmm. is a strong political intrigue. Like I like the spy stuff that they got yeah. going on. Like I, I did like that. that. That was a great use of that. That was like there's the unraveling of like all the different layers of stuff when the characters find out different things and like how they find out makes sense and like you get it all leading together. But then when you zoom out again and look at the bigger picture and look at how it compares to the way that things are structured and set up in the animated version. Uh, you, kinda, <laughs> you messed up a lot there actually <laughs> like, that's not that's not really there's probably a reason they did it this way in the animated one yeah why are you doing this sense. I, I don't yeah it's odd and it's just it's again a weird like runtime conundrum that i feel like they come into where it's like they had the time they had the space but instead because of the other decisions they made and everything around it, it like impacts how this is viewed and then it'll impact later things that come in too. And so I'm just like, ah, what are we doing? I will say the freedom fighters also though themselves. I do love the freedom fighters. They're great great. casting. Great casting. They're all, they're cast super well. They all play their parts super well. Again, as we've said, Jet crushes it. We love him. Mm -hmm. We love to hate him. He's amazing. We love to hate him. Like he's, yeah, He's a great bad character. I love mm-hmm. somebody made a comment. I I forget where I saw it, but somebody said like his actions are understandable, but they're not justifiable. And I was like, yeah. that's the perfect way to put it. That's Which is important. That's such that's an important, important thing to do yeah. for your characters. Like even the like worst villains, like you should be able to if you put yourself in their shoes, follow their logic and it should make sense. Yes. Oh, like, bingo. You can, like you can do that. And they do they to their credit, that is present in the the live action version. Mm-hmm. It's very understandable how he gets to his points, even Which, though yeah, we got that. Es- Thank God, the escalation falls a little bit like is a little bit more confusing because, like we said, there's a bigger leap in what he's mm-hmm. choosing to destroy. You're like, all right, now yeah, you're take out the into- like I think they actually comment on this in. I want to say I think they comment on this. I might be giving them too much credit, but I I feel like they do comment on the fact that like okay, well, what do you, like, what happens after you take out all those people, like, and take out yeah. the entire, like, ruling class and, like, party of Omashu? Like, what then? Mm-hmm. Like, how, how is that going to solve like, who's anything? Gonna rule? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, what are you, what are you actually doing aside from just, like, taking out your anger and, you know, blowing stuff up? And it's like, yeah, you gotta think things through a little bit more than that, man. Like, you gotta think things through. <laughs> which also goes to Sokka's point in the anime thing, where he's like, "You don't want to have freed anyone; they would have all been dead, bro." Like, yeah, you're not like that's not solving the problem. You're just making things worse for everyone. Like, <laughs> and so exactly, yeah, that's, that's a, a that's point. a rough thing. But I just, it's just such. It's so weird to think about the like. They just throw everything <laughs> the, together. They just and, mush like, everything together, and you're like. I just, I'm so curious and I wish, I want to talk to somebody who's never seen Avatar before Mm -hmm. and I want them to watch this live action and I want, because I don't think I can, I can't watch this or think about it without. Without comparing it. Without comparing it, without the knowledge. So I'm Mm -hmm. really curious, anybody out there, what, if they have not seen the animated animated. version, what this live action looks like, how it comes off, like. How are they not like, who's this person? What's this? Like, I want to see if they're able to understand things and what 
that's the thing they is are. that I feel like I'm very curious. It probably is solid as a show if you don't mm-hmm. have that frame of reference. And I and whenever the show aired, I did see a lot of people being like, "Well, you just have to take it as its own thing and not directly compare it you to can't the thing do that. that it's adapting." Which I I struggle with this a lot because I feel this very in my soul when it comes to comic book adaptations of things because mm-hmm. people but there's a difference here because people will be like well and i'm part of people where i'm like it's an adaptation of this I'm character <laughs> who like the difference though with the like comic adaptation and this adaptation is like in comic adaptation a lot of people will get into arguments about like the source material and like what it's adapting and they're mm-hmm. like is this isn't true to the source material and i'll use batman as an example batman's mm-hmm. been around for over 80 years right Mm -hmm. there is no one version of batman that they're adapting and so it's a lot you get a lot more leniency in your adaptational choices with a character like batman or superman or spider-man or whoever because there's so many different versions of these characters that have existed they've been Mm -hmm. written by so many different people there are these different things that you can pull in and so there's i feel a few like core character tenets that need to be present but beyond that for things like the comic book comparison I give them a lot more room to work with when the in the adaptation and I'm much more willing to accept the adaptation on its own terms as something different because mm-hmm. I feel like that is important to meet it on its own terms and I want to do mm-hmm. that with this and I get the people who argue that you should do it like this and you shouldn't try to compare it at the same time though there is one avatar show like yes so i feel like if you're going uh-huh. to compare it to anything it should be the thing that it's trying to adapt like yeah it's not that like you we can't don't not. have 80 different versions of avatar the last airbender we have the one yeah that they're trying to adapt and so it's impossible if you have seen the show to not make those comparisons and not to be like well how does this hold up against the one thing the one actual point of comparison that we have excluding the Shyamalan movie like <laughs> yeah yeah we're gonna like we'll get I was about to a say. little asterisk there like n- not like... not that one <laughs> like <laughs> but it's impossible to not compare it to the one thing that it's trying to adapt successfully like and see how it stacks up in that regard like you can't not make those comparisons and so exactly I get it if you haven't seen the animated series it's probably a pretty solid show and an enjoyable watch because in the context of just the live action Netflix series it works cohesively if you also like not talking about just general like storytelling stuff mm-hmm. being super obvious and telegraphed or not the best yeah. writing on like in certain instances or whatever like the the other production complaints that you could possibly have about it but like taking away the comparison critiques that you could give like I understand people being like no just take it yeah. as its own thing as its own thing but but you can't if you, you can't have seen the animated show. You can't do if, that. If you, do think you literally about, cannot like, do that. It's impossible. <laughs> yeah. And like, like I think about too, like people, one that did work, I've heard a lot, um, is the One Piece adaptation. I have not mm-hmm. seen the animated series, but I did like the live action adaptation based mm-hmm. on from what I know of the animated series. And I know my friends who have watched the animated series love the this live action adaption. They're like, it actually works. It's actually... Yeah a good example of this like this is the probably the only one ever that's worked and the one where you can but like people are always like oh this happens because this happens in the show this happens in the show like you're Mm -hmm. obviously not going to make a live action adaptation of like over a thousand episodes but yeah like but they do they summarize it in a great way and a lot of people have said that it's like but you have to think about the original show they can't not compare it they are comparing it but they're like but it works and to it's like you can do it (laughs) <laughs> yeah you like you should be like it's the one thing that you, you should, actually be should be able to compare it, it with yeah. yeah and you should see if the choices and that's not to say that they can't or shouldn't make changes because if you're not if you're going to adapt something and you're not going to make any changes what are you doing what's the point like yeah you should be bringing something new to it or something different to it like, like if you just yeah. do a one-to-one thing like i'll just go watch the original thing right and a good example, though, of like doing smart changes to an adaptation. Can I get to fanboy about Dune for a second? <laughs> Dune, like the two, like the two Dune movies now that like Dune Part One and Two, those are things where like there are big deviations mm-hmm. that happen from the book to these movies. The thing, though, is that the creators have taken the core ideas 
and themes and like taken that into account and made smart changes that feel true Mm -hmm. and in line with the characters and what the book is trying to do in the first place. And so even though it's a change, it's a change that makes sense and feels justified and doesn't muddle stuff or like take the wrong lessons from it. Which is like what all of the changes in Avatar feel like. They like missed the they point. Just, We've said it so many yeah, times. Yeah, it feels like, like they missed the point. They muddle it. Yeah. You missed it. Like you took the wrong lesson from it and you made this change in the wrong way. And like it, it feels very like harsh to be like, well, you did it wrong. <laughs> like, but it's like also though the main creators <laughs> left. So maybe you did kind of. So do maybe it wrong. you were <laughs> just like being stupid and thinking only of money. Like, a lot of it feels like a cash grab. It feels like, oh, we were doing this because we want people to watch it, so they get this. And mm-hmm. and it's so and sad, because like, there was a lot of good work done in that show. There was a lot of yeah. beautiful things that people did that got overlooked because of, of that bad writing. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh, you, were, you, were, you were so close. You had it. You were it. Just, like, you just there. You just had it in your hands, and you just dropped it's it. It's a, like... It's, it's changing the direction a little bit. Like if you would have gone right instead of left or mm-hmm. like up instead of down in this. And like, if you just, you were so close to like, I think getting if they the gave right... it more time. Like if they yeah. gave themselves some more time to really perfect know. it. And like, <laughs> they were working on it for so long. I feel I'm like, oh. it, for so long. it just, well, comes, I think it was I announced it... in like 2020. That's only like, only about like three years till they start on yeah. production. That's, that's not also... a lot of time. It like it just comes down to the like choices that you make at the top and like when you're first it like comes down to I wish I could uh, could see what the conversations in the room were about yeah. how they decided to break up the episodes and where they put things Very and what curious. they wanted to like put into certain episodes and like why and like as we've been saying just how that how much that impacts the overall thing mm-hmm. and then like because those big decisions then will trickle down into everything and that's why it like impacts it the way that it does and feels off in the way that it does or feels disingenuous to the way the characters or the arcs or whatever thing were in the animated series and why it feels kind of not great and you're like yeah you just would have made this other decision they just try to do too much i think too like if you if you made the other decision like this at the top instead of this then you get this trickle down effect that is closer in line to with what it felt like originally we're going for yeah so it's like I get wanting to make changes, but like make different ones. <laughs> make different ones though, but make like better ones. Yeah, it's fine. It's okay. So again, Jet's in cool, conclusion, though. yeah, <laughs> Jet's cool. He works. The actor's great. They yeah. wrote him well. Like he works on screen, but I think mm-hmm. he's just like your average. It's all the surrounding bag. stuff though. That's like he's your average frat guy. Like, <laughs> yeah, who's in an economics class and is like, no, if we kill half the population. We It'll don't have solved. more food. It'll All be right, solved. Thanos, you're like, just give us more resources. All right, actually. Thanos. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, so up next, Kate and I have a brand new segment called Bending Battles. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Alex. Enjoying the show on the Aspect Network? Then you should check out my show, Philosophy of X. Each week, I pair an X-Men character, story, or concept with a relevant philosophical topic and explore how the two relate to one another. Join me on my journey to examine the world of X-Men through philosophy. And now, back to the show. Welcome back to Bending the Narrative. Today, we have a brand new segment we're calling Bending Battles. This is where we put two or more characters, benders or otherwise, against each other mm-hmm. in a hypothetical fight to see who we think would come out on top. This week, we're taking the Freedom Fighters and pitting them up against the Pirates from last week. So, mm-hmm. Kate, who mm. do you think wins in this, in this showdown? It's what, six versus eight? Yeah, I can count. Six versus six eight. Versus so there's eight, eight, eight pirates. pirates of full-grown men, yeah. and these seem to be experienced pirates who have been doing it for pirating a for a while mm. and have... I mean, they have scars. They've been through battles. Everything that they own is obviously stolen. They're Mm -hmm. definitely experienced um, with their negotiating skills and everything. The main pirate goes head to head with Zuko and battles him. Um, No small feat. No small feat. No small feat. Um, And but in a sword battle. But no, Zuko is. We do find out he is very prolific with sword. Very proficient with swords. Yeah. Um, So they're all really good. But then. We cut to the Freedom Fighters who have t- 
taken down that whole tribe of mm -hmm. firebenders fire yeah. a fire nation um soldiers they constantly are fighting they made their own life they've been on their own for mm -hmm. their whole lives they all have very special and specific talents that are yeah. unique that not everybody might know how to fight against or deflect instead mm -hmm. of just sword fighting like we also, have arrows worth, long shot from far away noting, they're kids <laughs> they they're all, kids also they, they do all be underage Big thing, though, <laughs> they are kids though <laughs> yeah one of them but they are like eight <laughs> eight i think yeah there is a very young a child. child there with them <laughs> um but i think yeah they all are under 18 um mm. so it's oh this is a this is a good one this is a good debate because yeah it could first, really go either way. I'd have to see this. But at first, I, again, I thought, I was like, oh, freedom fighter solo. But then I'm like, easy. yeah. I was like, but, but eight the, grown men. Yeah. And especially experience. seeing them like in the rewatch, like, and how well they hold their own. I think for me, because it's tough, I do think they are pretty evenly matched as far as they, they both have a good variety of weapons, a good variety mm -hmm. of fighting styles. Mm -hmm. I think the the pirates definitely have the edge and experience. Obviously, they've been experience in numbers. Yeah, they're older. They've been around for longer. They have literally more people, which is big. Mm -hmm. The freedom fight and like, yeah, they're they each because I I feel like the unique weapons is applicable to both sides because I, yeah. I feel like the pirates do have unique ones. They don't really have any long range things, which is an important note that you mm -hmm. pointed out. So like, yeah, the, we have long the freedom shot. fighters have that, which is nice, but. It's tough. I feel like, though, that where the freedom fighters would maybe take the edge is that they're better at working as a unit. Like, Ooh. I feel Ooh, like true. the pirates are all more, like, self-preservation centered. Uh -huh. And though they do have the numbers and can fight well as, like, a collective, I feel like that's not really their goal. They're not a team. Yeah, they're, they're just, not... they're co-workers. They're not a team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, and so I feel like the freedom fighters are much more coordinated in that regard. And also mm -hmm. I do feel like Jack could one be one, any of the pirates and win. <laughs> so like that is, he went against the freaking avatar. Yeah. So and like, held his own against an airbender, which nobody's fought an airbender in hundred in like a hundred years. And yeah. never mind, he did it without bending. Mm -hmm. He can climb so trees. Like, like he's very agile. And also I like they have that youthful spirit. So like I there is that location. too location would probably be a big oh, a big factor because like the freedom that. fighters do very much deal with the elevation and the different you know being able to yeah. move around like if you stuff. put spider-man in the desert what can he do yeah so it's like he'll still if the freedom away. fighters are like on a beach maybe the pirates mm. have the edge there but then it's still i feel like though that coordination yeah, though ship. with the freedom but fighters even... is really is going to do something but then if they're in smoke bombs and they can't see maybe <gasps> You the know, smoke bombs. If the pirates use like, the smoke bombs, what can long happen? shots then useless if there's yeah. the smoke bombs. Like you can have long shot, you know, wherever, but if you can't see, then like he might shoot one of his own. Did any know. of them have a fan? I'm trying to think. No, I don't yeah. think so. No. I'm looking at their character designs right now and I don't I, I don't know, I'm looking at that too. Don't, I'm wondering. No, because long shot just has a bow and arrow. Long shot just says bow and arrow. Yeah, so just has a big club. For listeners, maybe. we're looking at the art book. Also. Yes, he just has a pipsqueak has a big club that he carries around, which is hilarious. Yeah. It's a tree trunk, essentially. It's just a tree trunk, <laughs> which is great. So yeah, I mean, I think the coordination is the biggest thing for me that makes me. I think the coordination will have freedom, lean, freedom yeah. fighters, and I think because we do enough, see that they're kind of the pirates are kind of fumbling a little bit. Yeah, right? and they're not really like they're not they're not a unit. I think that's why like well and also bending is is that the reason that the gang is able True. to like, Yeah. Get the, so I do think it is uh, the lack of bending across the board definitely makes this way more even for both. Yes. Sides. The yes. fact that neither of them have a bender is because mm -hmm. like if either side had a bender it'd be like oh well them. Like Yeah. The, well it would the be team with they superpowers. Could solo. Yeah, <laughs> well, the, the team with freaking superpowers. It's duh. probably going to pull it out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think the coordination and Jet also just being kind of OP is like that is true. Is, it's going to take it. That's a it's really a lot, good point. It's a lot closer than I thought it whenever I first whenever we were talking about this pre-show and stuff and we mm -hmm. had this decided on this um 
this battle, I definitely was like, oh, Freedom Fighter is easy. But then easy. with the rewatch, the episode, really thinking about it and like thought about it more. And I'm like, oh man, it's going to be, it'll be closer. Also, though, I feel like Jet, and this would be taking it out of the PG setting of a kid's cartoon. I feel mm-hmm. like of the Freedom Fighters, the only one that would actually like if it was like a life or death battle. Like I think that Jet's the only Jet one could that would really go for the cross kill. the line. All of the pirates, I feel like, would though. <laughs> like, yeah, all that's of the true. Pirates like, will be like, I'll murder these children. I don't care. Yeah, like, <laughs> like easy. I don't care. I like this is my lifestyle. I murder people like, all day and steal their things. Like yeah, like I'll, yeah. they'd be like, oh, I want that dude's bow. Actually, like instead of just gone. knocking them out. Yeah, but I wonder, so, do they are they killing fire nation soldiers the freedom fighters like as kids are they i mean we just see them knocking them out but is that well it's because we can only see them knocking we can only (laughs) see them being knocked out yeah that's why i say like you know that's going a little bit beyond the the pg setting but like as far as character things i feel i mean they're all okay with flooding the village but that's just because jet said so yeah see that's the thing is that like i feel like when if push came to shove the only one that would actually do it is jet because like they are okay with flooding the village but i feel like there is a little bit of they're not the actual ones too like they're they're not like yeah i agree this is the right thing to do they're like we listen to jet like they don't Mm -hmm. they're not like yeah this is good they're just like jet's good and so we'll do it yeah which is a big thing because where all the pirates will listen to themselves yeah, all the pirates would be like, "Oh, it's fine. Like, who cares? Yeah, like, they're whatever. I like. I want their stuff. I need to get out of here. Yeah. Like, and so, but then, These are cool see swords. again. But like, I need to get out of here. I feel like if they're battling and the pirates start to lose the edge, they're much more likely to just break rig and disperse and be done. Like, mm-hmm. and like that's it. Yeah, like again. The, but we don't know if they have like a familial bond or anything. Like months on a ship. Like- that's Maybe not i mean they don't have the time two, to flesh the that captain out or show that and the the barker i feel like are mm-hmm. are kind of close like that the rest of them I, I feel like maybe maybe not but i feel like they'd be bad where they'd be like oh if he dies whatever sacrifice him nobody matters yeah. but me yeah mm-hmm. so I, I do think again the main point is that coordination would definitely yeah. favor the freedom fighters final answer walking in and in <laughs> Yeah, locking it in Freedom Fighters. Just be- yeah, though. just because I think they would do combo moves together and they know each mm-hmm. other and how they fight. Mm-hmm. And they'd stop giving me a thumbs <laughs> thumbs up, Freedom Zoom Fighters. Agrees. Yeah. <laughs> Zoom agrees, Zoom agrees with me. That's I have to stop in. putting my hand in camera. I'll <laughs> lock it in. All right. Is that the last you anything else you want to say about this episode or this battle? No, I think that that's, yeah, final answer, Freedom Fighters. Takes it. Fighters. It's a tough one, though. It's tough. It is. It's very it. close. It's it's closer than I thought. Yeah. And guys listening, or if you're watching this, comment, like. Yeah, if you think we're you completely think we wrong. Went. If you think we're wrong, know. prove us wrong. <laughs> Give us some information yeah. in the comments on what you think about that, because I'd be interested mm-hmm. to see what other people say. Yeah. It'd be very interesting. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching and tuning into Bending the Narrative this week. Next week, we will continue our journey through the Earth Kingdom with the Great Divide. But before that, Alex, where can people find you online? You can find me online at AP Batman with two T's, uh, any social media, basically. <laughs> and you can find me online at Kate the Official, really only on Instagram. <laughs> Please be sure to subscribe here, though, at The Aspect on YouTube or any platform where podcasts are found. Please give us a like. Leave a comment, turn on that bell for notifications, and you can also follow us on Twitter slash X, Instagram, and TikTok at The Aspect Co. So thank you so much, guys, for listening, and flamio hot man!